So let me say this is going to be a very negative review. So fair warning, objectively speaking, I think this is an average to slightly above average film because of the political context and the way this film is going to be talked about. It's one of my least favorite of the year. And if you say, look, it's unfair to talk about the political context, you should just focus on the film's technical merits. The director, the actors, everyone talks about how important this film is for the time we're in now. All the reviewers say the same. So I don't think that's an unfair, I don't think it's unfair to talk about the context at all. So there's a lot that I want to talk about, but I'm going to start by doing the opposite of what the film did and prioritize Daniel Ellsberg, the man who faced over 100 years in prison for what he did and the very serious fear that he would be assassinated. And the fact that the movie would only have him in the movie for about two minutes and spend all this time on Catherine Graham, whose primary risk she took wasn't to her life, wasn't to go to jail. It was the share price of her company and her family's legacy. The fact that they would focus so much on her and marginalize Ellsberg, it just shows how out of touch these media figures are. And that's exactly why we see the attacks on the media, which is people not trusting the media, thinking they're corrupt. If you say, look, you're being unfair, there's been lots of movies where Daniel Ellsberg is the hero and he gets the majority of the screen time. No, there isn't, or at least not very many well-known ones that people are going to see. So the fact that in the big movie, that's going to be the definitive movie about this event, at least in modern times, they completely marginalize him. And it's such an interesting story. This is a guy who loved his country, was a military guy, and did this knowing he was going to be then smeared as a traitor and someone who was unpatriotic and did it anyways. I would much rather see a movie where that had at least an equal focus to an obscenely wealthy person fretting about their share price and their family legacy. And by the way, this marginalizing of Ellsberg, it isn't an accident. The people behind this movie and the media in general, they don't support whistleblowers. They don't support leakers. They support their right to publish leaks that they think are worthy of being published. Who is the whistleblower and the leakers in modern times? Well, it's WikiLeaks and Julian Assange. None of the media support WikiLeaks and Julian Assange. They at best say he's irrelevant. At worst, they say he's a traitor and he's working with the Russians to undermine American democracy, which, by the way, is exactly what Nixon would have said about Ellsberg. And that's the whole point for the people in power. It's one thing to look back 30, 40 years and say, Ellsberg, oh, he was great. What about the people now leaking emails and releasing your emails? Do you support them? No, of course they don't. And by the way, look up Mario Savio's speech. So it's a short clip. You can watch it on YouTube and listen to, he gives this great anti-establishment speech and listen to the rawness and the emotion in his voice. And that's why it was so powerful and resonated with people. And then in the film, they had an actor read this speech, but it sounded like an eighth grader who hasn't really prepared for at reading his assignment, just monotone and flat, no emotion in his voice. I just couldn't believe it. But again, that just shows how the media, what they choose to focus on and what they care about, they could care less about that speech and it shows. So the basic premise that governments lie and media should call out the government when they're lying. Of course, everyone agrees with that message, but we've just had an example 10 years ago of Iraq, of the media, these same media they're talking about in this movie, the New York Times, the Washington Post, going along with the government, not being brave, not taking a stand, so if this movie was being read and talked about as, hey, media, use the example of the 1970s, get your act together and be a watchdog of the government and don't be so chummy and cozy with politicians, then I would totally support this movie. But that's not how it's being read. It's being read as, look at how awesome and pure the U.S. establishment corporate media is. Let's have a movie talking about how awesome we are and how mean and unfair it is that people don't trust us. And all the critics reviewing this movie and saying, oh, look, a president who doesn't like the media and is attacking them. Tee hee hee. Sound familiar? Well, how about this? Look what the movie represents. A rich, powerful, elite media class who's so in bed with the politicians that they're supposed to be watching and they're so chummy chummy and friendly with them that they have a hard time really being objective and calling out the status quo and power. Sound familiar? And if you say, well, look, you're critical of the U.S. corporate media, so you're not reviewing this movie objectively. Do you really think that all these film critics who are writers for the Washington Post, the New York Times, or very similar organizations like them, or want to be writers for the Washington Post and the New York Times, do you really think they are being objective on this movie? Of course not. And I saw one reviewer write that this is the bravest movie or one of the bravest movies of our times. 
So a rich, powerful, beloved director making a movie with powerful, beloved actors that every single newspaper, every single critic, every single media outlet, every single award ceremony is going to love. I guess this is establishment clown world where that represents true bravery. Why is it bravery? Because Trump might make a tweet that attacks a movie and says it's a bad movie. Because the comment section for the YouTube trailer, people who like Trump might make a comment that says it's a bad movie and get some upvotes. How is it brave? And by the way, a lot of people are saying, oh, well, Nixon used the law to go after these newspapers. And that's the same as what's happening now. No, it's not. What's happening now, Trump, no one is claiming that he's doing anything with laws or regulations. He's talked about changing libel laws which ironically enough, that would actually help crack down on fake news, which they claim to care about, but that's not what they're talking about. When they talk about Trump attacking the media, they talk about Trump attacking the media in tweets and statements and the public not having a trust in the media, which by the way, it's easy to blame that all on Trump. And Trump has had an impact, I think, on making people trust the media less. But the distrust and dislike of the US corporate media, that's been going on long before Trump and will continue long after Trump is gone. And understand, if Julian Assange left the Ecuadorian embassy and was brought back to the States and was facing charges for these leaks, do does anyone think that the Washington Post, the New York Times, anybody would defend him? Of course they wouldn't. They would honestly talk out of both sides of their mouth and give positive reviews of this movie and say, look at Ellsberg and how mean Nixon was trying to throw him in prison and saying he was working with the Russians and saying he was jeopardizing national security while at the same time saying Julian Assange is working with the Russians and jeopardizing national security. We need to crack down on these leaks. Okay, so that's it for me talking about the response to this movie. Now I'm going to actually talk about the movie itself away from any kind of political context. Tom Hanks, I thought, was very likable, gave a really good performance, reminded me a lot of his performance in Charlie Wilson's War. And it's a star-studded cast. The whole cast is very strong. I'll give a special note to Bruce Greenwood just because I think he's been so underrated with what he's done this year. He was great in this. I thought he was great in Kingsman, The Golden Circle. And he was great in Gerald's Game. I think it's a really strong year for him. And I wish he got more recognition. And then Meryl Streep. I didn't find her character particularly likable, but that could be part of the point. She's playing someone who, like she says in one of her monologues, never held a job until her old age where she inherited a company. She's someone who spent their life eating fancy food, drinking fancy things, going to fancy places, and talking with other fancy people, and that's been their entire life, is probably going to talk in a certain way that I'm not really going to relate to. And then the scene of the newspaper actually being printed and coming out, I thought was quite good. And the moment when all the newspapers band together and they all print the story in that show of solidarity, solidarity, it's just a really nice historical moment. It's nice to see on film. But there are flaws in the film. The visuals, the cinematography, it's not bad, but nothing really of note. And the dialogue, most of the time it's just forgettable. There's really no quotable lines. And then the lines that are supposed to be quotable, it's so over the top, corny. So if you watch this movie without any awareness of the response or the dialogue around it, you'll say it's okay. Great director, great actors, all the money. Of course, it's not going to be a terrible movie. It's a fine. It's a fine picture. Nothing great, nothing remarkable about it, but it's fine. If you watch it with an awareness of the current media climate, either it's just going to confirm your views and you're going to say, oh, great, that's a wonderful movie, or... If you don't agree and you don't like the media, no one who dislikes the media is going to watch this and be like, oh, you know what? I was wrong. The media is not corrupt. The media is not flawed. We just need to support the media more. People just need to trust the media more and then everything will be fine in the country. No one's going to have that shift. So this isn't going to change anyone's mind. So as far as a really timely movie, I think it's a failure. It is timely and it's going to confirm a lot of people and get them more cemented in what they already believe. But as far as a movie that's going to change any minds and thus have any impact on the world, I'd say it's not. 